Hey guys, welcome to Sadan Sport, and this is Sadan. In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through another very important topic in physics. So this topic is will be helpful but for both Jambite and your own students. I must apologize for my inconsistency on this channel. <laughs> I'll try to be what consistent. All right. So let's look at this topic, and the topic is very simple, and that is what that is motion. So I'm going to look for every possible ways to make sure that this motion is clarified. Don't just leave. Don't just say, ah, motion. I beg. No. Whenever you see a topic on my channel, you should expect something very great and something very um, exciting about the video. So what exactly is motion? Motion has to do with movement of bodies. All right. Either there is um, a change of position or not, but when bodies move, that is motion. And you know that we have types of motion. We have the random motion whereby objects move anyhow scatteredly. Example of example of random motion we have the Brownian motion. We have dispersion of uh, um, dust. Okay, dispersion of dust uh, on the this thing. Sorry, in air. So these are examples of random motion. Which other motion? We have linear motion whereby a body travels on a straight line. Linear motion is also called translational motion. Let me write them here somewhere. Types. Types. We have random. We have, that's one. Number two, we have linear. Or this is also called translational. Okay. We have number three. We have, um, uh, which one again now? We have oscillatory. Which is also called simple harmonic. Number four, we have circular motion. And then number five, we have rotational motion. Here comes a little confusion now. What is the difference between circular and rotational? If you check your textbooks, some textbooks, secondary school textbooks, especially, when listing types of motion, they will just write circular and rotation like circular slash rotational and it does explain it on that one topic but circular motion is different from rotational motion now circular motion has to do with the the movement of the body about a part so there's a part like this whereas rotational motion has to do with the actual spinning of the body itself so look at what it means if i have this my pen just observe my pen as my pen is moving like this now, boom, it's actually trying to take a circular part. I don't know if you understand. So this is circular motion. I don't know if you understand. <clears throat> so this is circular motion. Now, if you observe something, you will observe that my pen itself is not twisting. Is that true? The pen itself is not what? It's not twisting. It's only taking a circular part. So this is circular motion. Now, where will it now be rotational motion? If the pen itself is now twisting, you can see the pen is twisting like this. So this is now what? Rotational motion. If you check your textbook, there's one wrong examples they give in the textbook. Check your textbook, you will see now that the um, under circular and rotational motion, they will now write, uh, what is it called? They will now give an example. Example, they will now give an example of the fan. They will say your fan is exhibiting circular and rotational motion. No. The fan is only exhibiting rotational motion but not circular motion because you can see that the fan itself is spinning. So in summary, rotation has to do with the actual spinning of the body. About a particular axis, we call the axis of rotation. And then circular motion has to do with the movement of a body around a path. A very good example of, um, uh, uh, before I say this example, you should also note that one body can exhibit two motions at a time. One body can exhibit what? Two motions at a time. Two types of motion at, a, at the same time. So what it means now is, let me give you a good example. If JAM and some universities like to ask this question, so let me make it very clear now. The rolling ball, if I roll a ball on the floor, if I roll a ball on the floor, the rolling ball is exhibiting two motions, is exhibiting linear motion or translational motion, and at the same time, it's also exhibiting rotational motion. So why is it exhibiting linear motion? If you observe, you notice that as it is rolling, it is moving over a straight line like this. I don't even understand. All right, it's moving over a straight line. Like this. So because of that straight line, straight path is taking, this is a linear motion. 
Why is it rotational? You can see that it is actually turning, turning as it is also moving. Another example again is the rolling cylinder. Rolling cylinder too has a bit two motion, which are what circular and rotational motion and linear motion. Another example again is the earth itself. The earth itself has a bit two motion. The earth spins around the sun. This is the sun. It rotates around the sun with other planets. This act of turning around the sun is what it like is called circular motion of the earth. But even as the earth is turning around the sun, the earth itself is also spinning too. I hope you get what I'm saying. No? The earth itself is also what? Spinning. So the earth is exhibiting um, rotational motion by spinning. I think it is the spinning that brings about day and night. I think so. And then the earth is exhibiting circular motion by running around the sun. I'm saying these things now and it sounded like a joke. But these things are highly suspect exam questions. I don't just come here to just give you formulas and start teaching, blah, blah, blah. I make sure that every, like, I give you the full gist and the full package about that particular topic. This channel is not a calculation in physics channel or calculation in chemistry channel. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Like, my videos are not calculational based videos. I give you all you should know about about that video about the videos all right the study of motion can be broken down into two major parts which are kinematics and dynamics let me make it clear here kinematics and dynamics and dynamics please pay attention guys this is very very important Kinematics is the branch of physics that studies motion of bodies without paying attention to the force responsible for them. Whereas, dynamics is the branch of physics that studies motion of bodies considering the force responsible for that motion. Let me repeat again. Kinematics is the branch of physics that studies motion of bodies without paying attention to what the forces involved. But dynamics is the branch of physics that studies motion of body by paying attention to the forces involved. Under kinematics, what you'll be solving for are acceleration, velocity, initial and final velocity, initial velocity, time, displacement, all these things. This is what you'll be solving for. You'll notice we're not talking anything about, we're not saying anything about force at all, at all. Then under dynamics now, we'll now be looking at Newton's first law of motion, second law of motion, and the likes. Now, let's just get started at the same time. Now, let's, let me define each of these guys. So you've heard of velocity that velocity is, velocity is displacement over time. Is that true? And you've heard of, uh, let me write a displacement. This is just for formality's sake. Let it be that I'm following uh, the standard. But this is not really what I want to do today. Then speed. Speed is what? Distance. This part of my writing is because of the material I'm using. Over time. Then what else again? Acceleration. You know that acceleration is? Acceleration is what? Velocity over time. Change in velocity over time. Okay, now the something I want you to see from here. I will look up, guys. What up? There's one called deceleration. There's one called deceleration. Or retardation. Deceleration or retardation. Please take note. Deceleration, or I will be calling it R. Retardation is equal to negative acceleration. It doesn't have a formula in physics. Or it has a formula, but the formula is confusing. The way me I teach my own is when you are asked to find retardation or find deceleration, use your normal formula for acceleration. Whatsoever you get, I don't know if you understand. Whatsoever you get, you will then um, do the negative of it. So if your acceleration is if your acceleration A is equal to four then this retardation or dissolution will be equal to negative 4. If your acceleration is equal to 
uh, negative two, then retardation will be equal to two. That's what I actually meant by that. Now let's look at how calculus can influence motion. Let's look at how calculus can influence motion. So let me write it here very boldly. Calculus and motion. Calculus and motion. Now, there's something I want to make very, very clear from this video. Please look up, open your eyes. I don't know if you've heard of anything like anything like the y dx before. That is simple differentiation. If I have y to be equal to um, ax raised to the power of n, then the y dx is equal to a n x raised to the power of n minus one. This is how we solve for the y dx. Okay. So it means that if y is equal to 4x squared, then the y dx will be equal to what? The y dx will be equal to 8, 8x. Okay? It means that if y, if y is equal to 3t cubed plus 2t squared minus 4t, the y dx Dy, no, I cannot find the y dx for this. I hope you know. What I can find for this one is what? Dy dt. I hope you understand. You do d1 on the left over d right. What it means is d left over what? D right. Let me write this one here. D left over what? D right. So I cannot do dy dx for this one. No. What I can find here is what? Dy dt. So dy dt now well, because I have y on the left and t on the right. Divide the t for me, I will not be how many? 3 times 3 will give me what? 9t squared plus 2 times 2 will give me what? 4t. Sorry, there is minus there. Minus what? 4. I don't know if you understand what I'm doing again. Sorry, I don't think I explained very well. Though. Look at the formula here. The formula is n a a n like multiply the power with this one, then remove 1 from the power. Okay? So, if y is equal to 4x squared, Multiply 4 with the power, which is 2, that will give me 8. If I now remove 1 from the power 2, it will now give me what? 8x to the power of 1, which is just the same thing as what? 8x. Then look at this one here. I will multiply the power, which is 3, with this one, and I will get how many? 9. 9 now, remove 1 from 3, I will now have what? 2. Multiply the power here, 2 with this one, it will give me what? 4. Remove 1 from 2 there, it will now be, I will now be left with what? 1. See here, I have minus, sorry. Minus 4, into um, differentiation of 4t is just 4. Okay? Differentiation of 5t is 5, and so on. So for me, you have um, 4t here is going to be 4. You just take only 4 and forget about the t. Alright, now let's look at this now. What does this differentiation actually mean? When you see the left over the right, it simply means how the change in, it's also the same thing as, when you see the y dx, it also means change in y over change in x. So remember that velocity is change in x, or depending on the axis you're looking at, change on the axis over change in time. I don't know if you know, okay? change on the axis of a change in time. That's what velocity means. And acceleration itself is what? Change in velocity over change in time. That means velocity can be solved with the formula dx over dt and acceleration can be solved with the formula dv over dt or d squared x over the t squared. Don't be scared of the symbol or what I'm seeing here. I'm going to make it very clear. All right, let's look at this now. Let's source. Let's. I just want to establish everything. Then we'll do plenty examples, and then we'll wrap up the video from there. I want to make sure every important foundation is already laid down. Now let me give you one to do. If v is equal to is equal to four t squared minus two t cubed plus t, find the v 
over dt so let me give you one to do so try it out pause the video attempt it and play the video to see if you actually got it so from here two times four is going to give me what eight t minus three so eight t that i will remove one from here three times two will give me what six t i'll remove one from three i will not be left with how many two then i say well, we just have only t four in the uh, differentiation of four t is four Differentiation of 5t is 5. Differentiation of 7t is 7. Differentiation of 1t, this is just 1t here, right? Is also just 1. Let me give you another one. Let's say, example 2. Let's say x is equal to um, 8t cubed minus 3t squared plus 7t plus 9. Now find dy dx, also find the square y over the x squared. Okay, so I hope you'll pause the video and attempt it. So dy dx is going to be what? 3 times 8, that will give me 24t. Then I'll remove 1 from the power, I will now be left with how many? 2. Minus 2 times 6, that will give me 6t. Then I'll remove 1 from the power, that will give me just 1 plus 7 here, 70, the first of 70 is just what, 7, plus, what about 9, there's nothing I can do about 9, 9 does not have T, so that will be automatically what, 0, that's how we do in calculus, so there's no, I'm doing the X over the T, so this is very, very long, wrong, sorry, 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 oh God, the X over the T, the square X over the T squared, the x over the t, the square x over the t square. So, 7, this is what? If I'm doing the x over the t, this guy does not have t. So, automatically, this guy will be what? 0. So, what about the square x over the t squared? What about the square x over the t squared? What are we going to do about this one? The square x over the t squared simply means you should differentiate the one you differentiated before again. That we have double on top and double down. Okay? The square x over the t squared means differentiate what you differentiated before again. So I'm going to get what from here now. 2 times 24. That will give me how many? 48t. Is that true? Minus 60. Differentiation of 60 will give me what? Just 6. I don't even understand. That will give me just 6. Alright, let's assume you want to still do the cubic x over dt cube. So what will this give me? The cubic x over the t cube, this will give me um, 48t. That will be just that will be just what? 48 here. Then 6. If I differentiate 6, that will be what? 0. So this will just be my, my answer. Okay, this will just be my answer. Alright. So now let's solve real questions. Real questions that you're supposed to know how to solve. Example 1. But before I solve that, let me bring something to your notice, please. Please, I hope you remember that the y dx is still the same thing as the y dx is still the same thing as slope. I don't know if you know. Yes. So if I have a velocity, okay, maybe I'll do that under velocity and um, graphing of motions. I think I'll do that under graphing of motions. So let's look at it from here now. Example one. Let the displacement of a particle on the x axis okay be given be given as x function of t equal to 3t squared minus 4t cubed plus 2t. Question 1. Find the displacement at time equal to 1. Find the at time equal to 1. Question 2. Find the velocity at time equal to 1. Okay. 
Vou dar um do fold desse também. All right, it's okay. Find the velocity at time equal to one, and also, question three, find acceleration at time equal to one. So let's change time small, time equal to two. Now, please pay attention, eh? I'm going to solve this one just once, and I'll give you one to do, and I'll solve one more, and then that'll be all. I don't want the video to be too long. This is not a very difficult topic. So if you look at this thing here now, I was given this as the equation, right? So I'm asked to find what the displacement. Please take note too. For the displacement, I will not differentiate. I don't know if you understand. This is the equation of the displacement given to me. Now I decide to find the displacement at time equal to 2. So what I will do is, I'll just carry the time. Put inside here to get the displacement. This is the main function of the displacement. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. No. So find the displacement at t equal to 1. They've given me that displacement is dependent on the time. At every time, the displacement is always 3 times square of the time minus 4 times cube of the time plus 2 of the world time. So when you are given the displacement equation and you're asked to find the, the displacement, you don't need to solve. Is that true? So look at what I will do from here now. Find the displacement. So displacement now, displacement x. Let me call it displacement x will now be equal to 3 into bracket. They gave me time as 1, right? 1 raised to the power of 2. I'm imitating this now, okay? Minus 4 into bracket. They gave me time as how many? Still 1, sorry. So 1 raised to the power of how many? 3 plus what here? 2 times what? 1. So 1 squared is still 1. Is that true? And then if I do this, 1 squared is still 1. So I have 3, 1 times, 3 times 1, 3. Minus 1 cube is still 1. So, 4 times 1 is what? 4. Then plus what do we have here? 2. So, here we have 3 minus 4 plus 2. And everything is going to give me 1 meters. Okay? Everything is going to give me 1 meters. So, it is as simple as that. No differentiation. So, now they said I should find. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I solved it under this column, this section here. So question two is find V at T equal to one. So remember that V is change in displacement, okay, over change in what time, which is the same thing as what? Dx over what? Dt. I don't know if you understand. All right, so that's how we solve. So for velocity, we will differentiate the displacement. I hope you get what I'm saying. For velocity, what are we going to do? We will differentiate the word displacement. For acceleration, we will differentiate the displacement two times. Okay? Because the first differentiation will give us velocity. And then the second differentiation will now give us what? Um, the acceleration I'm looking for. But if I'm giving... Let me write it so you write it as a statement. Acceleration. Let me write it so you write it as a statement. Acceleration. Okay? derivative of velocity if you are given velocity just do the derivative of velocity or or what double double derivative of displacement or double derivative of what displacement please right take that note of these two so let's look at velocity for now velocity will be just single derivative of the displacement so what is the displacement 3t squared if i differentiate that i'm going to have what 6t squared that means just 60 minus 3 times 4 that will be 12t which is the power of how many 2 then plus what do i have there just plus 2 remember i said the first of 2t will be what 2 so having done this, this is not a single value. So I need to put in, they said I should find velocity at t equal to 1. This is the velocity expression now, okay? Equation now. So I need to fix in my, my, my time. So I'm going to get what from here? 6 into bracket 1 minus 12 into bracket 1 squared plus what? 2. So this will give me how many from here? 6 into 1 is what? 6 minus 1 squared is still 1. So 12 into 1 is what? 12 plus what? 2 from here. So this is going to give me what? 
minus 4 hmm? minus 4 meter per what seconds minus 4 meter per seconds all right let's see we're looking at acceleration here now acceleration we said acceleration either would differentiate velocity that is dv over dt or we will differentiate the displacement two times twice so since we have expression for velocity this is expression for velocity let's just go ahead and differentiate this again and then we are okay okay i hope you know why we're differentiating two times for acceleration by this differentiating displacement twice for acceleration is simply because the first derivative will give us velocity then the next derivative of the velocity can now give us the word acceleration i don't know if you understand so for me what i will have in total is going to be if i differentiate this i'm going to have six just six for that guy six here minus how many of this one will i have um 24 right 24 t this one will be what zero is that true remember that the original question i said you should find acceleration at time equal to two right so this is going to be equal to what six minus 24 into um 24 let me write it here at t equal to 2. 24 into 2 here. So this is going to give me 6 minus 48. So this give me 6 minus 48 from here. So 6 minus 48 will give me minus 42 meter per second squared. So this is it. So please let me show you something again. Acceleration is equal to minus 42 meter per second squared. Or you say retardation. Is equal to what? 42 meter per second squared. That is how it works. All right, let me give you one to do. Let me give you one to do. Let me give you one to do. Look at this one. Let me give you one to do. Let's say you are given something like this. Let's say this time around, the displacement is on the y-axis. So we have, um, and they've told you that the displacement is in centimeter. Uh, that's another important information. Centimeter, and they told you that the time is in seconds. All right, from the statement. So you're not giving the displacement now to be, um, displacement now to be what again? Now let's say, 2t cube minus 4t plus 2. And then you're asked to find acceleration at time equal to 2 seconds. That's your own. So pause the video and try it out. So to find acceleration, I need to differentiate velocity. That's dv dt. Is that true? Or... I will differentiate displacement twice. So for this case here, I don't have velocity expression. Okay? So what I will do, I will differentiate displacement two times. So when I differentiate now, let's go for that. dy dt, I will have what? 6t squared minus what? 4. So this dy, I hope you know that this dy dt is the same as the velocity. Is that true? So I'm still going for my acceleration. So acceleration will now be what? dv dt i don't forget or d square y over dt squared so this will be equal to six times two times this will be giving me what 12 t minus differentiation of four is zero so let me pay attention they said at i should find the acceleration at what time time equal to two seconds right so this will be equal to 12 times two and then that will give me 24 now 24 what exactly Go back to the main question. They've already told us that the displacement is in centimeter and the time is in seconds. That means it will be 24 centimeters squared per second. All right, you do this one now. Do this one. I'll give you two more to do and then we call it. We wrap up the video from here. If you have to solve this one, let's say you're giving V. Let's say I'm giving V to be 4t squared minus 2t cubed.
and then you're asked to find acceleration at t equal to one so pause the video and try it out so if you do it correctly you will get acceleration is just this is velocity given to me what you're getting so our solution is just differentiating velocity so our solution is dv over dt so this will give me how many here 8t minus this will give me how many here 6t remove one from the power that will be 6t squared then i'll put my one okay i'll now have um, 8 into bracket 1 minus 6 into bracket what 1 squared so that will give me 8 minus 6 and that will give me 2 meter per second squared depending on the unit given to me in the main question two meter per second squared i don't know if it's clear enough for look at something in this question what if i am asked to find velocity itself what if i'm asked to find velocity itself like i should find velocity at time so velocity at time equal to t1 i hope you know i will not tamper i will not differentiate the velocity because this is the main expression for the word velocity I don't know if you understand. So this is the main expression for the word velocity. So there's no need tampering with it. Okay? There's no need tampering with what? With it. So what I will just do now, I will just put the values inside of my time and I will get back the velocity. <coughs> Let's look at this question. All right. Let's say. I don't even know the, the number of example now. All right, let's say that the po let's say we are there are some questions whereby you'll be given the position of a particular object or a body at a particular time. I don't ever get to know. So let me write this: the position of a body A. T equal to 1 along the x axis is at x equal to 2 meters. Full stop. After 4 seconds. After four seconds, let me put this way. Along the exercise is at x equal to two meter, right? And then the position. at t equal to 5 seconds is at x equal to 10 meters find the velocity okay you need to observe so look at look at something the position of your body a at t equal to 1 second Along the x axis is at x equal to 2 meter. And then the position at t equal to 5 seconds is at x equal to 10 meters. Find the velocity of the distance. Find the velocity of the of that particular body. So what we'll take note of is that remember that velocity is equal to change in x over change in time. Is that true? So what we'll observe, okay, let's call them, let's number them. Let's say x1 is is um, two meters while the time one is also how many where's the seconds given time one is one second okay and then let's say x2 is now 10 meters why the t2 is how many five seconds so that means the velocity now is going to be what changing the x so let's say x1 minus x2 over t1 minus t2 or you do x2 minus x1 uh, over t2 minus t1 so <clears throat> no problem with the formulas but the problem is that whatsoever you do up you should do the same thing down i prefer to do something it's going to give us a simpler uh, solving 
so if i do x2 minus x1 i'll have 10 minus 2 okay 10 is my x2 10 minus 2 that will give me what 8 from here divided by t2 minus t1 that will give me what 5 minus 1 and that will give me what 4 so 8 over 4 will now give me how many 2 meter per second all right if you know you have any confusion anywhere make sure you drop it on the comment section below or you can see my whatsapp number on the screen make sure you actually send me a dm with a screenshot of the session or the part of the explanation that you don't really get or understand but you can do well to join our physical year one tutorial classes and jam tutorial classes for more clarification and then because i have to wrap up with this video now it's already going to 40 minutes and i don't want it to get to 40 minutes so this is how we solve let me explain this question again so they said the position now there are some questions whereby you'll be given position of a body per time okay so the position at this time is this the position at this time is what this one and you'll be asked to calculate the velocity it's very simple what you will do is you will check the change on the the position axis divided by the change on the time time given all right so that is it for our solution uh, for velocity then for their solution type for the solution type they will give you velocity at a particular time and velocity at another time to find acceleration so what will you do you do the change in the there's one popular question in jam and year one too let's let's let me see if i can construct a question like that so they said that a coordinate system of velocity and time is given so they said this is velocity versus time so they now said look up the initial velocity and time is let me say 20 meter per seconds comma um 15 15 seconds okay then the, the body moved to a new point whereby the velocity and time um coordinate now became 50 meter per second comma uh let me see comma 30 seconds find the acceleration so this will not be very it will not be difficult what we'll do what i will do i'll look at this first bracket here from this first bracket, I will get my V1 to be 20. As, according to your choice, you'll do it anyhow you like it to. So even, I can even look at inside the answer and subtract. Get change in V, velocity, is 30. Check your change in, velo, change in um, time is 15 and divide. Remember that acceleration is actually what? Change in V over change in what? In T. I don't know if you understand. So for me, if you look at this place here now, this will be V1, I just want to write it according to the standard so you get it very clearly. So V1 is 20, V2 can also be 50 meter per second, and then T1 can be 15 seconds, while T2 will now be how many? 30 seconds. So what I will do from here now is change in V1. Remember, it's going to be V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1 for solution. Or I can still do V1 minus um, V2 over what? T1 minus T2. So if I do that, let me do V2 minus V1. I will get 30. Okay? Over, let me do 30 minus 15. That will give me what? 2. Sorry, 30 minus 15 will give me 15. Sorry. So 30 over 15 will now give me 2 meter per second word squared. Alright guys, so this is where we're going to draw the cutting for this video. If you know that this video is actually helpful, please do well to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more updates on very interesting topics like this. See you in the next video. Thank you.